Hello and welcome back to another video. In this episode, I'm doing something a little bit different once again. As opposed to diving out in the open ocean like I usually do, this time I'm going up to Tyra Harbour to see what I can run into. I'm hoping for some trevally. I've seen quite a few around, but they always manage to evade me. A very smart fish that people don't give enough credit to. So this day I'm just jumping in at the wharf. The plan is to ride the incoming tide up the harbour and hopefully find some structure holding fish. So after diving around the wharf for a little bit, not seeing much, I grabbed my float boat and then decided to head further on. I didn't grab it initially because I knew diving with a float line around structure like this is just going to get tangled. So I decided to hold off, dive around the wharf for a bit and then come and grab it when I don't see anything or if I don't see anything. So here's a quick view of the bottom. It's pretty much all sea anemones and shellfish, which is one of the reasons why this harbour is able to hold so much life. Truly a huge amount of fish can be here sometimes, and this is one of the reasons. After a little while in the water, not seeing too much, I came across this frame from a bluefin tuna that someone had left out here. Very big fish. Kind of a shame, there's still a lot of meat on here, like that head especially. I'd boil it up, make a mean soup, pick the cheeks off, and that'd be a good feed for a lot of people. But unfortunately this one, I wouldn't say went to waste, it's going to get eaten eventually, but still a shame I think. Every time I'm out in the ocean I make an effort to find rubbish and collect it and get it out of the ocean. And you'll be pretty surprised some of the things you'll find. This time it's a vacuum cleaner head, you really got to wonder how things like this end up in the ocean. Irresponsible humans, I don't really understand it. Eventually I come up to some very promising looking structure, almost like a weed line, only a couple of meters deep but it seems to be holding quite a lot of fish. I see this anemone from the surface and make a dive towards it. Finding something to distract yourself like this kind of gives the fish a little bit of time to get comfortable around you. If you turn your attention to them straight away they can be spooked, but if you look at something like this they'll come up and be like oh he's not interested in us, he's interested in the sea anemone. And they'll be a lot more comfortable around you because of that. So here we got Porori, quite a lot of them and for whatever reason this harbour I find Trevally like to hang out with the Puri quite often. So this is a real good sign and I figure at this point I'm sooner or later going to run into some Trevally. Which I end up doing. Shortly after this I run into a huge school of really big Trevally. Unfortunately I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't turn my GoPro on so I didn't get any of that on footage. However the main thing to me was experiencing this. I've spent a lot of time trying to get a good Trevally out in this harbour and I've always had a really hard time with it. These fish don't get the credit they deserve. I reckon they're definitely up there with some of the smartest fish like snapper and kingfish. They can be inquisitive but they're a lot more timid than kawai. Like the way they swim and where they hang out in the water col column is quite similar but they're just always a lot smarter. They'll be hanging right at the back when you know, Carwell will swim right up to you. While this was a nice Trevally, there were some true monsters in the school. This one I'd shot was on the smaller side and there's some that I estimate to be almost twice as big as this one. Some truly good ones to look out for in the future, hopefully get one of those, that'd be a real satisfying experience. But it's always good to know there's something more to aim for and I've seen it with my own eyes now so I gotta get out there and get one of those real good fish. Anyway I take another dive Heaps of Pororia around. A lot of the Trevally had moved off at this point because as I was saying they're quite smart and they could kind of catch on to the fact that one of their own got killed. Still a couple hanging around but not in the same numbers I was seeing earlier. The Pororia have no problem swimming up to you on the bottom but the Trevally were really on to it this day. I mean they usually are but like today especially they're being really cautious. And as I say many times fish can tell when you're targeting them. These Pororia can see I'm looking past them but the Trevally, as soon as I make eye contact with them, they're gone. So I didn't see too many Trevally on this dive, but upon making it to the surface, shortly after, uh, another huge school comes through with some very nice fish in there. They may have even been waiting for me to surface and realise I couldn't dive straight away. As tempted as I was, I could have probably done a quick dive maybe, but it's not worth the risk. I already had my fish and I was happy with that. I was looking to get a second Trevally, but... I really didn't need it and didn't end up shooting another one, but that's fine. There was plenty of meat off the first one to do me for a couple of days, and I get fish all the time. I dive regularly, I fish probably every other day, so it's no major to me. The big thing for me is just being out there experiencing it. Like what I remember more than shooting that Trevally and eating it is just seeing all the other ones here. 
eventually I've had enough of the surface time to comfortably make another dive. And at this point, most of Trevally School had been through. There are a couple of stragglers at the back, but very wary fish. You can see the bottom's really stirred up from those big trevs coming through earlier, kicking that stuff all up. There's poros milling about and the odd Trevally in there. But you can see I could try to line up a few times and they just spook straight away. It's really hard to extend on Trevally for whatever reason. Like, they seem to understand that you're a threat to them a lot better than most other fish can and I don't know if it's these ones in the harbour especially because I've had probably a lot of exposed to human contact or more of a generalised thing with Trevally. Only time will tell and diving more with these fish I'll get a greater understanding and appreciation for the abilities that they have. This spot that I was diving was a very specific small area and after about 10-15 minutes in it pretty much all the fish cleared out and moved on to other waters where they weren't being hunted so it was good while it lasted but with areas like this you can't dive them too often or the fish are really going to catch on to you so it'll probably be a week or two before i head back here and try my luck at another trevally swimming out of this area i see some more rubbish on the bottom spotted by this blue handle i go to grab it out and put on my float boat but it's quite a bit bigger than i had initially realized seems to be like an anchor or a mooring of some sort and there's just no way i'm going to be able to get that back safely without tipping my float boat over and losing my trevally and all the other rubbish. I'm distracted by these spotted wrasse, a very nice cute fish. These are just juvenile ones but really cool to see regardless. Here's the trevally just holding it up so you can get a good view of it. Not the longest fish but man just a fatty like the width of them, crazy. Here's a little sand flounder I found on my way back in. Another juvenile just chilling. They're good fried up but they have a minimum size limit and this wasn't going to meet it. Here's this little outpost we have in the Tyra Harbour. I'm not really too sure what it's for, but on the back there's a little basket with a net in it. Presumably for catching mullet and whatever swims up the harbour. Pretty lazy way to fish, but eh. Here's some more rubbish, a V-can swim left here. Bit of a shame, but... I don't know. Yeah, bit of a shame. So swimming back towards the wharf at turn of the tide, got the tide pushing me back in, I come across a school of kawai in real shallow water, they're just kind of cruising around, probably hunting the shallows for whatever they can find. And there's quite a few here, nothing huge, I could have shot one if I wanted to, but I don't really need to. I'd got my Trevally, I was happy with that, big enough to feed me for a couple of days. And yeah, I was happy just watching these ones. I shoot a lot of kawai, catch a lot online, so it's nice to sometimes just let them swim. And you get a lot more of an understanding for the fish that you hunt if you don't shoot them and see what they do afterwards. Because if you see a fish shoot instantly, you're not going to get an understanding of how that fish behaves around you and with a spear pointed at it. So learning a spear fish is a lot more complicated than just shooting fish and that makes you better. I find the most educational experiences you have with fish are often when you don't shoot them and just watch what they do, how they respond to you, how they respond to other fish, how they act, where they live, where they swim, all this other stuff that you're not going to understand about them if you just see them shoot them straight away. This is just a little scenic clip swimming over a little sandbar, well not really a sandbar, more like a shell bank, but yeah I just thought this was a pretty cool little one. This next clip's pretty sad, so a couple days prior to this I was diving the wharf and I had shot a trevally and my shaft pulled out pretty much straight away. So I'd assumed it was quite a bad shot, which I mean it was, but I managed to get all the way through the fish and tear quite a big hole in his gut cavity. Unfortunately this fish died likely soon after and I wasn't able to find it up until this moment a couple days afterwards. So it's pretty bad, you want to be really confident in your shots, and I was confident, but stuff like this does happen unfortunately. This fish won't go to waste, you can see there were a lot of starfish feeding on it, and everything gets recycled in the ocean. Set rubbish. Don't put rubbish in the ocean. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely did, I had a great time, and looking forward to doing more diving like this. Something good to do when there's swell out in the open ocean, just come here where it's nice and sheltered.